Hey everyone, Joel Lance here, and today I'm in Morgantown, Morgantown, West Virginia. My first time in West Virginia. We had the full day here in West Virginia. Uh, we went to go see a whole bunch of cool things, but here we are to do my first food challenge in West Virginia at the Mason Jar Saloon. The Mason Jar Saloon in Morgantown, West Virginia. So for the challenge here, it's called the Jar Burger Challenge. So you have a six patty burger. Um, it is three pounds of beef, so six half pound patties. Then you have a whole bunch of bacon. You have multiple layers of cheese. Um, you have uh, fries. You also have coleslaw as well, plus like onion rings, tomatoes, lettuce, all that good stuff. You have 45 minutes to complete the challenge to get the $32 meal for free. Um, and you also get a sweet t-shirt if you win. So of course, we're talking free meal, and if not, $32, and hopefully free t-shirt as well. <clears throat> it has been a long, long, long day. This is actually like 10 something, it's almost 11 p.m. Let's head on in, have some fun, eat some food. I will say, so actually I, already was, I was already inside. Um, I tried to do two, I asked to do two if I could double the challenge, and unfortunately they uh, ran out of beef. Like they don't have enough to do two at the moment, because like I said, it's super late, they are about to close. So anyway, let's head on in, have some fun, eat some food. Let's get to eating. Hey everyone, real quick, I want to thank sponsor today's video being The Man Shop. So Man Shop is actually a Canadian female-owned company specializing in merchandise and goods like clothing and accessories for men, but they also have many cross-gender items as well, you know, whether it be clothing, but also items like fancy gourmet ketchups. This is the actual dill pickle flavor twisted tomato. I'm super excited to try. They also have some really well-known hot sauce brands like High Coast. And they have a variety of like sugar-free jams and really anything you could ever want. The suppliers and distributors are coming from all over the place. So you have Canada, US, Europe, Australia. And with thousands of different items, they truly have something for everybody. So go get started on your custom order today. Visit themanshop.ca. Yes, it is themanshop.ca. And if you use the code JH, you actually say 15% off your order. So at that, check out the man shop and let's get to the rest of the video. Alright everyone, so here are with the challenge. So we have the massive burger. Again, we have over three pounds of beef on this, then all the bacon, multiple cheeses, onion rings, lettuce, tomato, etc. I then have the side of coleslaw. We also have the uh, order of fries. So we will have 45 minutes to complete this. We do get the meal for free. And now we're looking at a $32 price tag. Like I said, we'll get started here just momentarily. All right, so I just put the burger on its side. Um, but yeah, we got some onion rings here. Again, all the burger patties, coleslaw, fries. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much about that. So we're gonna have 45 minutes. So how do we get started? I'm going to uh, probably get started with the coleslaw. Because why not? So we can start, we'll say the count of five, four, ready to go? Three, two, one, let's eat. Very creamy. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we're here at the Mason Jar in Morgantown, West Virginia. So here, um, as I was in West Virginia for my first time, I wanted to try to get a food challenge win in the state. Whenever I visit a new state, if possible, I like to kind of try to food challenge, hopefully get a win in the uh, state, and that's what obviously we were hoping for today. And they said they've had about three winners in the last two years. Alright, coleslaw was good. Said again, these burgers, ooh, they are very, very hot. Nice and steaming hot. Let's uh, I'm just gonna dismantle this a bit. Eat some of these veggies. And of course, I have my ketchup pile right here, my signature ketchup pile. So. Let's get going through that. Good bird. So I actually had a very hard time finding food challenges in West Virginia. Um, you know, by my normal means of scouting, there were very limited options. Um, there was uh, like maybe like two or three other options, one being a hot dog challenge, hillbilly hot dog challenge, I believe it was on Man vs. Food, but it was way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, then there was a, a, a restaurant which had like an ice cream challenge, um, but they were closed for the week we were in West Virginia. Um, so luckily I did find this burger challenge and it was not at all far um, from where we were going. Um, so that worked out really, really well. And especially one that we could accommodate like such a late start. Like I said, we had a very, very full day and this was like after 10 p.m. How 
So the burger itself is pretty straightforward challenge, 45 minutes, six patty burger, fries, coleslaw, finish it, you get it for free, and a sweet t-shirt. I think we're like just over two, two minutes, two some minutes out. Salt burger, don't punch. I have uh, three of the patties down. So we'll get the rest of it. Lots of bacon as well. Looks very delicious. Can't say I've ever found bacon I don't like. With the $32 buy-in, I think it's very reasonably priced. I think it encourages individuals to try it. Um, and really, like, the one thing I do really appreciate is they were very honest and very transparent for what you got, right? So they said, you know, exactly that. It was a six patty burger, bacon, cheese, you know, the veggies, etc., with a side of fries, which they said was just like a normal side of fries, and that was definitely just a normal side of fries. Same as the side of coleslaw. It's not like they were trying to, you know, make this bigger than it should have been or beef it up at all. They were just very honest and transparent, which I definitely appreciate. Um, I myself did try to double it, but again, um, they didn't have like any more beef uh, patties prepared or beef on hand or not frozen um, to do so, um, but they would have let me double it otherwise. So, you know, I did try. Now, um, with this challenge, again, there had been about, I think it was three winners in the last uh, two years, and for attempts, it didn't sound like there was too, too many attempts, maybe by the sounds of it, you know, let's say 20, maybe 30 attempts in the last couple of years, so, you know, even if there was 30 attempts and you had three winners, that's about a 10% success rate, so actually that's pretty, pretty reasonable, to be honest, um, and I think it is a pretty reasonable challenge, whereas again, it kind of the beginner intermediate, uh, I think it's a good way to start. About four minutes in, nice soggy juicy bottom bun. They did say the previous record was about 14 minutes, five o'clock. Definitely be sure to check out the end of the video where you have lots of footage from West Virginia. West Virginia, I will say, was absolutely beautiful. Um, so if you've ever been to West Virginia, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of it. And uh, where did you go? Because we got like, we went to caves and mountains and it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. So definitely check out the end of the video where we uh, have a lot of that footage. Um, but that, I believe that's pretty much all the information I have for you today. I'll let you get to the rest of the uh, video. Um, hopefully we can get this win, and my which would be my first win in the state of uh, West of Virginia. Buns, bacon, onions, and fries. Bacon still is trying with these onions. And by the way, if you like the video so far, please hit that like button down below and consider subscribing if you already haven't. It's completely free and it helps the channel grow and that way you don't miss an upload and I can continue to bring you the best content possible. But at that, like I said, let's get to the rest of the video. Six minutes in. I think these fries got some seasoning on them. for an excuse to eat ketchup, so.
46 seconds, I believe. Um, so very delicious to enjoy the challenge. Uh, so we do get a meal for free. I believe we might also get a t-shirt. We get a t-shirt as well. So we also get a t-shirt, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, really cool to finally do my first kind of challenge in West Virginia. It was something that happened really last minute. I wasn't sure it was going to happen. So able to uh, swing this in from really cool. Woo! Hello, well, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Just a quick one today. We have here in the area. I think it's a very reasonable challenge. Uh, it has a very, uh, let's say, affordable price tag, a buy-in price. And I think this is a challenge that, again, like, you know, being our intermediate can kind of get on it. But, yeah, definitely enjoyed it. No complaints. Um, so that's about that, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Of course, the next something to have you. I hope you're happy eating. Lots and lots of cool footage about West Virginia. West Virginia is freaking beautiful. And I have to give a huge shout out to the state. Really cool. What is it? Wild and wonderful. Wild and wonderful. So with that, everybody. So uh, next time, just, that's it. It's after 11 p.m. now. It's, it's very, very late. It's been a long day. And, uh, I thought, I hope you, I hope you have a good night, or good morning, or good day, wherever you are. Till next time. Goodbye. Alrighty, everyone, we are officially going through slash heading out of Roanoke, Virginia. So now I'm heading north, two miles, out of Roanoke, because we're in the south, I can drink a uh, Coke. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go see some mountains and all these things. Got to go into a place called the Seneca Caverns. Looks really cool. Kind of reminds me of what Mammoth Cave is in Kentucky, if you're not familiar. Basically, great big limestone caverns which have been created. But I will say, I always knew that Virginia and West Virginia, like this area of Virginia and Oregon, West Virginia, is known for like mountains and green. And boy, oh boy. Do we ever have this is like thick, thick, lush greenery? We have these great big, uh, kind of see them by the trees now, these great big mountain thingy things. There you go, right there. Great big top mountain tree mountains. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to greenery, sights. Look, here's Lynchburg, Lynchburg, Virginia sign, and uh, hopefully, some awesome caverns. So again, just an exuberant amount of greenery. We have these great big mountains here in West Virginia guiding our trail. We have a very like kind of nice uh, windy road through a double-sided forest. It's pretty impressive to be honest. Um, we kind of just went through a beautiful, beautiful patch of like again, fully enclosed greenery. Let's see if we get to one here again. And if not, just look at the mountains, look at these hills, the hillsides. And like I said, the most interesting thing I find is, you know, with these mountains and the hills, et cetera, whatever you're gonna call them, is they're not just like, you know, white peaks or just rocks. Like, holy cow, look at that. Look at that one, that is impressive and the camera does not do that justice. But they are all fully green. They are fully, fully, fully green, covered up mountains, which is absolutely impressive, so again, West Virginia, both the actual, you know, state and right now being in the state of Virginia, just on the western side, has a lot of green. Very beautiful, at least this time of year. And we are officially about to enter West Virginia. So this has been Virginia, but of course the western Virginia so far. Again, here's kind of more of these trade routes that we we're talking about. Just absolutely crazy, gorgeous scenery. Very, very, very green. Um, I mean, that's again what I knew, at least West Virginia and Western Virginia were known for. And there's no shortage of green space out here. There's lots of water along the side of the road as well, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and we will continue. There's sun right there, you can't see it. There's the brush. But I will continue to get on our way. All right, everyone, here we are in what is Riverton, West Virginia, about to enter what is the Seneca Caves. So Seneca Caves, um, a big cave system, uh, history dating back to the Seneca people, 
and we'll hopefully find some more info out about it. All right, how's everybody doing this afternoon? Good, Good thanks. Welcome to Seneca Cabin. My name's Pat. I'll be your tour guide for roughly the next 45 minutes and three quarters of a month. Is this anybody's first time in the cave? Yes. All right, we'll cover a few safety things first. While we're in the cavern today, please keep your hard hats on at all times. There will be some low stones. Feel free to take as many pictures as you want to. We do ask that you don't take video, though. The reason that we have a consistent source of water for his livestock and his family. He knew that he had a cave on a property. He knew most caves in West Virginia have water. Now, when they originally entered, they would have entered through this side of the opening over here. Then they came down this little bit of a mud bank, right out into this area where they made a 90 degree turn and then went directly underneath where we're standing. When we get downstairs, I'll be able to show you where that pathway came out of. Then in 1927, the last male member of the Teeter family had passed away, and the farm transferred to the Harmon family, which was the wife's family. And they're the ones that did the commercialization process. That took roughly three years for them to accomplish. Put the electrical system in, the pathway in, and the bridge at the back of the cave. Then on Labor Day weekend, 1930, we gave our first commercial cave tour. Right. And we've been doing steady and consistent tours ever since then. Now, as we come through today, you'll have to use a little bit of imagination when I show you different formations and give you the names. Can everybody do that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now the boring stuff's out of the way. Y'all ready to see some formations? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's going to be a long walk to the first one. Everybody ready? Yes. Okay. I will get you all to follow me. This formation is not only the largest in the cave, it's also the oldest. It's been dated at 4.5 million years old. One of the interesting things about the Dutch oven is if you look back here behind it as you come by, you'll notice that it's hollow inside. So if I were to stand right here and drop something straight down, we'd be able to pick it up as soon as we got downstairs in the middle of the pathway. Wow. Now, does anybody have a cell phone with a light proof case they'd like to test today? They say they're virtually indestructible. I can uh, right here for you. We can test it all day. Anybody? Nobody. Oh, man, I didn't carry one. Now, is this thing about the case? I don't know how much I The next room I'll be showing you is our grand ballroom. And our grand ballroom is the second largest room in the cave. I see what they call the grand ballroom. Very cool. Roughly 250,000 years ago, we had a very large earthquake in this area that broke off the top part of the column. When the top part landed on the cave floor, it became King Tut's tomb. Oh, cool. And we call that King Tut's tomb because we've got one of the great pyramids right here. They look a lot bigger when you see the pictures, don't they? If y'all come over this way a little bit. Back on the back wall, we have Jaws. Now, oh, Jaws isn't just hanging out on the wall. He's actually jumping up to the ceiling right there to get one of our side of the Jaws. After the wedding ceremony, Rocco and Snowbird came over to our balcony and to prove their love for each other, they jumped off. Now when they would have made their jump, they would have been jumping into a large pool of water down here. They came about to this level. We know there was a large pool of water because if you look on the ceiling, you'll see stalactites. But what we don't have on the bottom are any stalagmites. Hmm. And then up here in our waterfall room, on the left hand side, we have our candlestick formation. And we're just a little bit late taking down our Halloween decorations. We still have a Halloween mask up right there. Yeah. <laughs> then over on the top of Candy Mountain, we have our bald eagle perched. And our bald eagle is actually looking up towards the ceiling where there's a large fish market right above his head. And we've also got the Capitol Dome right there. Excuse me. Wow. This is cool. It looks like a. Maybe it is. Maybe it's like a tunnel or a passageway. And then. Bricks? I guess. I don't know. Bricks? I guess. Stacked rocks. And in the 1920s, our fruit chimney was actually used as a roof cellar to store food. Wow. The original pathway that went underneath our feet upstairs came out right behind this wall. So there would have been a 30 foot ladder between here and the top of the ground. Just imagine every time you went to the fridge, you had a 30-foot ladder. Uh, I'd make a few less trips, I know that. Uh -huh. 
Now, the rock walls are made out of the material that was removed from the Dutch oven upstairs when they put the pathway through. Uh. It's a lot easier to bring material back down into a cave and then repurpose it than it is to haul everything back up out. And this wall also helps to support the balcony that we were standing on upstairs. Hmm. Now, the formations I'm going to show you in this section are food remaking. If I can get right, a slide over to this side so you can see this wall right there. Is everybody ready? All right, here we go. We have got a bundle of bananas. Then down below the bananas, we have a melon. And right next to the melon, we have an ear of corn. And then down below the corn, we have a cucumber. Now that cucumber used to be a carrot, but it turned green, so nobody likes green carrots, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we figured since we have a bundle of bananas, we might as well also have a little monkey. He sits on the shelf right there. But the most interesting thing about where I'm standing right here is if you look up, you'll see we're actually standing inside of the Dutch oven that I showed you upstairs. Okay. So if we would have tossed that cell phone down here, it would have landed right in there. And the gray area is a manganese oxide deposit. And there's also a little bit of a sulfur and an iron content back up in food here. Three person, two, definitely two person pad. I think that's pretty reasonable. Coming through the cave. People, I think, were shorter back in the day, too, right? So. What a duck. ceiling. Here we got a big pool of water. That's really cool. Look at all the little, all the little thingy things. Oh, there's my head. Super, super cool. Fairyland is called Fairyland. Now inside of Fairyland we have a few different types of stalactites. The large ones in the front are called organ pipes and they're hollow inside. So if we were to knock on the outside of them with a metal object, it'd make the same sound as a gong. Then up in the ceiling, we have some soda straws. They're another hollow formation. They get to be about the thickness of a pencil. A lot of times, by the time they get to 12 or 14 inches long, they can actually break off under their own weight. Now, if you notice on the ceiling right here, you'll see some of the soda straws have a white tip on the end of them. What that white tip is, is the amount of new growth since 1930 when the cave was federally protected. 
Before oh. that point in time, they actually allow people to break the soda straws off and take them home as souvenirs. Mm. Now, if you all will continue to look into Fairy Land, I'll turn some Christmas lights on for everybody. Yeah. You can get some really good pictures right back in the base of the steps, and then once everybody's done taking pictures, I'll get you back over the stand program. Rimstone pools and rimstone dams. And the way they form is water dripping down from the ceiling into a pool of water creates a splash and a ripple. And that ripple carries the sediment that's on the water all the way to the edge of the pool where it accumulates, building up rimstone dams. A lot of times rimstone dams can actually start to encapsulate the pool of water itself. What do you say? Yeah, I definitely take a picture. Take your time. Now, in 1994, we dye tested the water going into it to see where it came out. We checked the level of springs, the streams, and also the other cave systems around us and never did find it. Which leads us to believe there is another cave system directly beneath us that has a bar running water supply. And some more West Virginia. Look at this. Look at this big ridge. Pretty crazy. Definitely we'll say wild and wonderful as the uh, the West Virginia slogan goes, and I think it's only soothing that you go, well, we are on the country road, so, you know, talk about West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, country road. And here in West Virginia, we have Fat Cow Lane. Fat Cow Lane. No words are needed. Hopefully we got some fat cows around here, because I'm hungry. And here we are at the Seneca Rock, which is very, very, very big and very, very pretty. So uh, basically the sign was saying that um, the first recorded climb was 1939, and there's like hundreds of routes up, some leading to the summit, some in a knot. Apparently there is an observation uh, kind of uh, area which you can see, which is near the north of the summit. Otherwise, it is um, saying you need to be a skilled climber, but pretty dang cool. And here we got like some of the trails, so you can walk up this way, green, which is easy to overlook, and then just all the other routes up to get. But uh, a lot of history here with the Seneca people, um, and rumors of the uh, Seneca um, Princess Snowbird. She was a princess, and apparently uh, she chose her husband based on whoever could climb this rock, so pretty cool. Still here in West Virginia, now heading to Blackwater Falls, which is pretty, well, it's about an hour, hour away from where we saw the Seneca Caverns. Um, we also saw Seneca Rock, um, but now this big waterfall is supposed to be pretty big. And here's the falls. The water level looks quite low, but it is very large. We were just very, very, very far away. And there's a little, little outlook down there that I want to try to get to. I don't know how you get there. And here's some crazy scenic overlook here, which is pretty dang cool. See, it's like a valley, it just goes on and on and on. On and on and on. It goes on and on. Something, something. 300 hours. So as you can see, we're getting down to the falls. And so the waterfall itself is actually 57 feet. And the water goes all the way from the Ohio River down and keeps going, uh, reaching the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico. So it's pretty crazy that this literally goes across the country. Definitely a big fall. And I know at times when it's heavier, water is all across it, not just in the two divots where it is now. There you go. So here we are at the not public area of the waterfall. You're not supposed to be up here. We're not actually up here. You're just hypothetically showing you up here. But yeah, so there's the fall. That's where it drops down. You see the water? Going over the edge there to its abyss. And this is what it looks like at the top. Pretty cool. Obviously you can see again where the water is higher, it pools, covers these areas. You can see how the water has like, worked its way through the trail, smoothened the rock, and just kind of warped it over millions or thousands or you know, however many years, so pretty cool. And definitely don't do this at home, but here we are over the falls. 
That is a 57 foot drop of water and rocks. Don't do it. Do not recommend. But it is very, very beautiful here and beautiful out today. Another crazy view of West Virginia countryside. Again, we're up on a cliff. We're up over there at that lookout right over there. That's where we were at that lookout earlier. Now we're here at this lookout, which is absolutely insane. Again, something camera does not do justice, just how big and vast and wild and wonderful this is. And here is the Lindy Point observation deck. This I think is the most substantial view, craziest view we've seen all day. Like there's the water way down there. Again, here in a beautiful mountain ridge. It is just absolutely extravagant. Hopefully the camera captures some of this. This is definitely a thing which it is just not, like a, a video does not encapsulate this, nor does a photo. But this is definitely well worth it. If you're ever over at the Black Falls, um, it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth it to, to, it's on the same property, but it is further down. Just go to this Lindy Point. And when you park, don't walk on the trail that says four by four access, whatever, whatever. We walked about 20 minutes that way, it doesn't go. It's the trail is literally right here, right by the parking. So learn from our mistake, but look at this in gorgeous, 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 crazy, crazy view. Beautiful, and it's, it's not quite sunset, but it's beautiful. And here we are over the ridge. Again, don't do this at home, but here we are. Looking down, definitely a bit of a drop. Uh, I would not want to get too, too, too close to the edge, but it is very, very, very beautiful. Very, very, very scenic out here. And uh, like I said, just gorgeous. Very, very stunning, to say the least. West Virginia. Take me home, country road. And last clip of just how crazy this is, like kind of by again a ledge, but it's just absolutely like ridiculous how big and vast this old like mountain ridge crazy thing is. But ah, it's just breathtaking. And I really wish that you know, I just wish you guys could understand and how crazy this all is. Like, it just doesn't do it justice, so. West Virginia, good job. All right, furthering in the West Virginia with the craziest, windiest roads ever. Look at the thing, look at the bend. Now this is, that's, that was a slow bend. There was definitely some ones with more bend. Literally a second ago going down the mountain, it was like a roller coaster. But undoubtedly, the windiest roads I've ever, 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 ever seen. Probably should have got gas. Didn't realize how many uphill, twisty, turny, drivey things are going to be doing. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right. Click my face, subscribe, guys. It helps me out. It helps you out. Then you don't miss an upload. And hopefully, I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically picked two videos, yes that's right, two videos specifically for you right here. So click a video right now, get that going, and it's going to end. So click one quick, let's go, let's go, and have a great day.